Guys, can you believe that Ray and Luke are gonna be out of the office for training for the entire week? HQ feels so weird without them. Well, when the cat's away, the mice will... Enjoy a nice minty stick of gum. Edison, I don't think that's how the saying goes. I wonder who our substitute will be. I know, right? Will they be fun or strict? A robot, perhaps? To your feet, cadets! Captain Chad Culliano's filling in for Captain Ray, and there will be no idle chit-chat, not on my watch. Well, that <coughs> answers that question. <coughs> I, I just swallowed my gum. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Dot, and this is how we spent a day with a substitute captain. And where are you or were you not chit-chatting with your friends? Well, technically we were lounging. Sir? And where are you or were you not lounging on Connect HQ's most valuable time, young lady? Well, I prefer to think of it as relationship building, sir. Or an activity important to team. Uh, productivity, sir. Does it look like I'm choking, soldier? Sir, no, sir. Well, I am. <laughs> Please just see your faces. I, I'm confused. Is he strict and scary, or are we the victims of a practical joke? I think it was just a joke. <laughs> it's like my first grade art class all over again. Oh, you're an intense little dude. Sometimes, but Edison's a great guy to have around. I'm Harper. Pleasure. And you must be Dorothy, AKA Dot. The one and only. Well, as you just heard, I'm Captain Chad Koulianos. But most people call me Captain Cool. Would you like a tour of HQ? Sounds cool. Right this way. We're gonna double snap. And this, of course, is Connect HQ's command hub. It's the heart of everything we do here. What's this? Oh, yeah. I noticed that on the way up here. I left it alone, though, you know, it smelled like work to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we do here. Exciting. Our first mission with Captain Cool! Yeah. What's it say? Dear Connect HQ, my parents won't let our dog on the couch, but she's just so snuggly, I can barely resist. Is it okay if I put her on the couch with me when my parents are gone? I mean, they can't get upset if they aren't there to see it. Thanks for your help. Sincerely, Sanika. Sweet, an easy one. We'll have this wrapped up in a hot minute. Nice. Lead the way, Captain Cool. Okay, guys, check it out. Here's your answer. Dear Sanika, as long as you don't get caught, everything should be fine. You do you. I mean, if snuggling up on the couch near a cute, cuddly puppy makes you feel good, then by all means, you should definitely do it. Is this another joke? Nope. It's a test. I mean, we obey our parents because God says so, even if we don't feel like it. Did we pass? Guys, it's not a joke and it's not a test. It's just good advice. But the Bible is very clear that we should obey our parents. <laughs> and that's fine. But guys, sometimes you just gotta go with your gut. I always listen to my heart. I mean, look at where it's gotten me. Right, Edison? Listen to our hearts and do what it says? See, this guy, he gets it. Good job. That was my last piece of gum. I get what you're saying, Captain Cool, but I think that's bad advice. Oh, uh, potato, potato. Why don't we look for some other links before we reply? Oh, uh, uh, smells like work again. Well, I'll find a Bible link for Seneca. Good thinking. I'll look for a verse link. I've got the point link. And I'll uh, supervise. Go team! What's 
What's up, Dot? Working hard or hardly working? What do you think about this verse from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23? Want to try it with me? Why not? Romans 3.23. Romans 3.23. Everyone has sinned. Everyone has sinned. No one measures up to God's glory. No one measures up to God's glory. I love it. I don't get it, but I love it. <laughs> the idea is that no one is perfect. It's impossible to measure up to God's glory on our own. We need God's grace. So that's why Seneca can't just trust the way she feels to tell her the right thing to do. You said you do you, but that won't help us measure up. <laughs> Captain, cool. <laughs> the duck's name is Robert. Oh, um, hey, Dot, I'm sorry. Took a little nap there. Uh, anyways, keep up the good work. Not cool, Captain Cool. Hey, Harper. Working hard or hardly working? Hey, Captain Cool. Just looking for a Bible link. Want to see what I found? Let it ride. This is a 66 pick mixed up into one. The book's about God, who he is and what he's done. It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside. It's alive, a prize to hide in your heart and in your mind. Old Testaments are set up for the big event. When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement. It's history, his story, whose story, God's story. Let us know up all the pages that this show gone off. Let us word explode from this video into your life. God gave us rules to know how we should treat others and respect the world He created. We can find God's law in the Bible. Rules? Law? Doesn't that sound kinda bossy? Actually, He gave us His law because He loves us so much. God's law teaches us how to love God and love others. For example, God knows life is better when we don't do evil things, like lie or hurt each other. There's a story in the Bible about a leader named Moses. God wanted his people to know how to live, so he gave Moses the Ten Commandments to remind us what is right. We just have to obey. There's just one problem. No one, and I mean no one, can obey the law all the time. We all make mistakes. When we compare our list of mistakes to God's law, it shows us how sinful and selfish we are. But what if the list of our sins was erased, torn up and forgotten, every mistake forgiven? Would God really do that? He already did. God saw the mess we were in and sent us a free gift to fix it. That's why God sent Jesus to earth, to make things right again and forgive our sins. When Jesus died on the cross and came back to life, that fixed our broken relationship with God. He took the punishment for all of our sins. God gave us grace for our mistakes. All we have to do is have the faith to believe it. Is God's grace free for everyone? It doesn't matter who you are or what you've done. You can't earn God's grace by working harder. And you don't deserve it just because you look a certain way. Even though we don't deserve it, God's grace is free because Jesus already paid the price. Wait, if God's grace forgives us for everything we do wrong, then we can throw out the law and do whatever we want. No, we shouldn't do that. Faith in Jesus and God's law go hand in hand. The law shows us we are sinners who need Jesus, and Jesus helps us obey the law. We need God's grace and truth to live life the right way. God created your life to be a beautiful adventure. He loves you so much that he gave you two things to help you live life to the fullest, Jesus and his law. When you put your faith in Jesus, you are forgiven. When you follow God's law, you are free. So what do you think? Will it help Seneca with her problem? I love it. I don't get it, but I love it. Wait, what do you mean I don't get it? All this talk about the law, I just do what's right for me. As long as I go with the flow and don't hurt anyone, I think I'm doing just fine. But God's law shows us where we fall short, and it shows us that we need Jesus. Look, how about you do you, and I do I, or me, or whatever it is. Look, I'm going to check in on Edison and make sure he's not being too intense. I'm glad I could help you. Where did they find this guy?
There he is. Hey, you working hard or? Hey, Captain Cole. Dude, you didn't let me finish. We're hardly working. What? Oh, never mind. Dot and Harper, man, they were bumming me out. So I thought I'd catch up with my good buddy, Edison. <laughs> I'm still looking for a point link. Oh, all right, well, don't let me interrupt you. Uh, hey, do you know if this thing has my sweeper? Actually, can I ask you a question? Yeah, what's up? You said earlier that we should listen to our hearts and do what it says. Yep, yep, that's where all the feels are. But the Bible says our hearts without Jesus are controlled by sin. If we only listen to our hearts and our feels, we'll most likely make mistakes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everybody around here is too intense. Listen, you want to find the best point, Link? You got to go with your gut and listen to your heart. Excellent. Thanks, Captain Cool. <laughs> Keep working on those snaps, man. It's a great Bible link for Seneca. It's a good reminder that it's more important to obey God than to follow our feelings. Someone should tell Captain Cool that. I tried. Guys, listen to this. I like it. No, I mean, do you hear a point link in there? What do you mean? I'm listening to my heart to find a point link for Seneca, but so far I'm not hearing anything about dogs or couches. Captain Cool strikes again. Edison, we can't just listen to our heart to help Seneca, literally or otherwise. My heart doesn't measure up, but God's grace can clean it up. Wait, say that again? My heart doesn't measure up, but God's grace can clean it up. That's the point link. The point link is, my heart doesn't measure up, but God's grace can clean it up. Point link acquired. I want to hear my heart. Sounds like a hummingbird. Yep, that's my default. All right, all right, so what I'm hearing is that God wants what's best for me, and since he is God, he knows what that is? Yes. yes. So when I listen to my heart, or my feelings feel like they have my best in mind, they're not wiser than God. Yes. So when my feelings tell me to do something that goes against God's word, like disobey my parents, I should just follow God's law, because in the long run, I'll be happier? Yes. yes! I love it. And I get it. And I love it. Okay, so how do we get this to Seneca? I'll get to work on the connection transmission. Cool. So this is what you guys do around here. You want to answer another one? Sure. I'll gladly supervise another one, but after I take a short nap. Maybe we could see if Ray and Luke can come back earlier. <laughs> Sounds like a cool idea to me. Hi, my name is Harper. I'm part of Connect HQ. We found an answer for your question. The Bible tells us this in the book of Romans. Say it with me like this. Romans 3, 23. Everyone has sinned. No one measures up to God's glory. Everyone makes bad choices that disobey God. If we measured our lives by the things we do, we would never be anywhere close to God's glory. But God gave us two things to help, His law and his son. God's perfect law shows us the way life works best and where we fall short. He sent us the free gift of grace through his son, Jesus. It might feel good to go with your gut or follow your heart, but choosing to do what's right for you doesn't measure up to life the way God designed it to be. Feelings can get in the way of obeying God's law. It's hard to obey. That's why we need God's grace. My heart doesn't measure up, but God's grace can clean it up. Life is best when we listen and obey. So we recommend you snuggle with your puppy on the floor, even when your parents aren't home. Thank you for your question, Seneca. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Yo, 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 this is DJ Edison. I think this thing has some potential uses outside of his usual application. Nobody can obey God's law all of the time. That's why he sent his son, Jesus, to forgive our sins. When you believe that, you choose to follow Jesus with your whole life. If you've never made that decision before, all you have to remember are the A, B, C's. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. 
P. Believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C. Choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. If you want to make that decision today, be sure to talk about it with your Connect Small Group leader before you leave.